Good afternoon. Um, welcome to the Forensic Science Institute. It's my honor and privilege to introduce our speaker for this afternoon. He is David Willman. Mr. Willman is an investigative journalist with the Los Angeles Times and has been employed by them since 1995. Prior to that, he worked with the Pasadena Star News and the, the uh, San Jose Mercury News. In 2001, Mr. Willman was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for his work in the discovery of seven drugs that were erroneously approved by the F Food and Drug Administration. He has been the recipient of many other awards, uh, including um, the National Press Club Award, as well as the George Polk Award. That work uh, was his work on presidential finance uh, and the improper use of funds for presidential campaigns. Uh, the work of David Willman has not simply been read and placed on a shelf, or in terms of newspapers, read and placed in the recycling bin. Instead, his work has gone on to change public policy. For example, in 2005, his uh, work changed a policy at the National Institute of Health regarding the payments uh, to government scientists uh, and those payments coming from drug manufacturers. In 2008, he was cited by the Scripps uh, Howard uh, Foundation for his investigative reporting in the anthrax investigation. He was given the award for the top news story in the Washington, D.C. area in 2008. And that's the reason we're here. It's re regarding his latest publication, his latest book, called The Mirage Man. That book is about the 2001 anthrax investigation. And I can tell you, having lived through that investigation as the former director of the FBI laboratory, that this work is very authoritative. It is very complete, very thorough. Um, I believe that uh, uh, one of my favorite passages in, in the book occurs toward the middle of the book. And it talks about the dichotomy between the traditional investigative approach and the scientific approach that was being conducted during this investigation. And in that passage, he says, in contrast to the spectacles that surrounded the, the uh, searches of Stephen Hatfield's apartments and the pond, the scientists' work continued methodically and quietly. That passage described very well the two approaches to this investigation, and it was uh, the efforts of many scientists, both in the FBI laboratory and around the country, that I believe led to the solution of this investigation, and that solution, I believe, is captured uh, expertly in the book called The Mirage Man. And so with that, I would like to, for you to help me welcome David Willman to the Forensic Science Institute. Thank you very much, Dr. Adams. Uh, it's certainly an honor to be here with all of you at the Forensic Science Institute of Central Oklahoma University. Uh, I'm pleased to see so many students uh, who are being trained here for this important work. And I want all of you students to realize that uh, a group of very well-prepared, rigorous scientists are, as Dr. Adams alluded to, uh, actually some of the clear-cut heroes of uh, my book. Um, so some of uh, 
their work was crucial, obviously, to unraveling the anthrax letter attacks of 2001, which really uh, stand as the most complex scientific challenge uh, ever undertaken by the FBI. Uh, so my message to you in brief is study hard, uh, please, because we need you all. I'd, I'd like to briefly highlight some of the backstory of the Mirage Man, um, and I'll look forward, obviously, to taking uh, all of your questions uh, at, the, at the conclusion. This book stands on the shoulders of, as uh, Dr. Adams alluded to, my work with the Los Angeles Times. And uh, it's, uh, for those of you who aren't reading the LA Times every day, uh, I had looked in great depth into a battle behind the scenes in Washington over the pre-existing anthrax vaccine, the only approved anthrax vaccine this country has ever had, and a new product, a next generation vaccine that was genetically engineered, and in fact uh, invented by scientists uh, at the uh, United States Army's uh, Biowarfare Research Complex in Frederick, Maryland. That ties in very uh, directly uh, soon enough here. Uh, I had also, uh, for the Times, dug into uh, a lawsuit that uh, Stephen Hatfield, a former uh, biowarfare scientist, uh, had filed against the FBI and the Justice Department uh, related to uh, the treatment that he experienced in the, in the initial years of the FBI investigation. And through reading the thousands of pages of sworn testimony gathered in that litigation uh, and the exhibits uh, along with the testimony, it really gave me um, a, a valuable insight into what had happened with this investigation, at least in the uh, initial uh, stages of it. So uh, I, I really was uh, uniquely positioned by the spring of 2008, and my reporting was propelling me really toward uh, the most uh, important, the biggest unsolved mystery lin lingering from our fall of 2001 trauma, and that would be uh, the anthrax letter attacks. Five people uh, developed inhalational anthrax infections from those attacks and were killed by, by the letters. Uh, each death, of course, remains a tragedy, uh, and yet the letters had even uh, more far-reaching uh, effects on our society. Uh, legislation called the Patriot Act had been introduced in Congress immediately after September the 11th, it was very controversial and, and, and questioned uh, seriously by many civil libertarians because it expanded the authority of law enforcement to spy on our citizens. Uh, and in the United States Senate, uh, the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, was going to do what they do in the Senate, which was to slow things down uh, to make sure that they actually read the bill to see what was in it. Uh, and then the anthrax letter attacks hit, and people on both sides of the partisan aisle, actually in both houses of Congress, told me during my research that at that point it was game over. There was no chance uh, for slowing down that legislation. It blasted through the Congress and in fact passed the Senate by a vote of 98 to one. Uh, another uh, cause that was immediately uh, sort of coupled with the anthrax attacks was uh, the, an the, uh, the drive to take out Saddam Hussein and, and the Iraq war. There were many within the Bush administration, some in Congress and, and quite a few uh, outside the commentariat uh, who were gunning for Saddam Hussein for a very long time, prominent members of the Bush administration, Defense Secretary Don Rumsfeld, Deputy Defense Secretary Paul Wolfowitz, I'm sure these are familiar names to you. They had written a letter to then President Clinton in 1998 saying that the only viable policy in that part of the world was to take out Saddam forcibly. So the anthrax letter attacks were really a gift in the lap of these ideologues, uh, and they immediately uh, began uh, in intimating that the anthrax attacks were somehow sponsored by Saddam Hussein or Al-Qaeda or pa perhaps both interests. Um, the third uh, major policy consequence that flowed from the anthrax letter attacks was something called Project BioShield, um, which provides billions of dollars for research into the development of new medical products, vaccines, other countermeasures that may at some point make us uh, safer in the event, God forbid, of another biological attack. But Project BioShield was accompanied also by a dramatic expansion of biocontainment laboratories around the country. Uh, at great expense, great ongoing expense to the country. And this means that 11,000 and more scientists and technicians have already been being brought into this work handling these highly portable, lethal pathogens without the commensurate uh, controls that would give us assurance uh, that w whether these people were, were uh, trustworthy to be handling these things. So th these, are, these are very, very big things. Uh, buildings in Washington were closed, the operations of the United States Supreme Court were affected, uh, government, residential, business mail was greatly disrupted. And so a benign portal of daily life, the mailbox, had become an instrument of death. 
so I'd like to, to maybe ask you to stand back with me a little bit from the yellow tape perimeter of the investigation. Uh, and